when working with clients in my office who are experiencing grief for, you know, the first time and have really felt it, it can bring so much to them and they don't know, you know, what's right to feel, what's wrong to feel. Are they even grieving? Sometimes it might not look or feel like the way that we might see it on TV or we might hear about it on the news because grief is just so unique for each person. Um, and for a lot of people, because we don't talk about death and we don't talk about grief here, a lot of people might just think like grief is just sad and that we're missing that person, but it can also be so much more. I've had somebody come in and sit with me and they'll talk about how their insomnia has gotten really out of whack and they can't focus to read a book and they used to read, you know, a book a week easily. Um, or they find that they go to their doctor and their doctor's like, you've got stomach ulcers or there's another physical symptom that's showing up for them in their body. And after we talked for a little bit, we realized like somebody in their life had died not that long ago and they might not have been feeling sad or, you know, really quite feeling their grief on an emotional level, but their body was feeling it on this physical plane. Um, and it's a really big light bulb moment, I think, for a lot of people in grief because we can go from, you know, being sad to not being able to sleep to not being able to focus at work to feeling really disconnected from, you know, our spiritual community if our faith is really important to us and all those different pieces and all those different ways that grief show up are all incredibly valid. Somebody who's dealing with a lot of physical symptoms of grief, the achy muscles and the tightness in their chest and the upset stomach, you know, sitting and talking and crying their feelings actually might not help them feel better. But what's going to help feel them, make them feel better is actually tending to their body, you know, letting themselves physically relax, having an Epsom salt bath to relieve the tension in their muscles. Um, you know, to drink a lot of fluids because their stomach is so upset and tend to them in a physical way. Other people might be grieving and feeling a lot of feelings. And so they might be the type of person who needs to find somebody like a counselor or a trusted loved one where they can talk about how they're feeling and let themselves feel sad and show their sadness with somebody safely. For other people, it's our minds that take a lot of that. And we have lots of questions and wonderings and learning about grief and what it is and how it works and how that can show up for other people can actually help them move through their grief. So we can have a family where somebody's the reader reading all the self-help books. The one person who, you know, puts on that happy face for work, but when they get home, they're hitting the gym and going to hit that punching bag. And then the other person in that family, you know, wanting to talk about their loved one at the kitchen table and writing about them and crying about them. Each of them are all grieving and they all are allowed to. I think it's really important that we remind ourselves as we grieve, no matter how we grieve, that we give our per ourselves permission to do so and also figuring out what works for us because what works for me might not work for you and that's okay. We're allowed to figure out what's going to help us most in our grief.